you're holding the tiller, okay, in the back hand, in a dagger grip, okay, or a mic stand grip. This, they're close together and your hands can pop each other out. Okay? So if I want to pull more sail in, I can use my right hand as a cleat. Okay? If it's down here, it's harder to pull across your body. Okay? So try and keep it in front of your body. You might find this is a little bit, if you're not used to doing this, is a bit awkward to steer with. Because it's okay pushing, but when you try and pull it, you actually have to pull, you get to about there and it's a straight line, so you actually have to put your arm straight and then turn the blade that way. Okay. It's almost like a pull and a push back. So that's something to get used to today. When we're tacking, okay, we're steering with, well you steer first as you go into the tack. You don't have any crew, so you don't have to say all this, ready about. Okay. Uh, but as you swap sides, keep it your arm in front of your body, okay? So you follow your arm across the bird. We call this a Superman dive, okay? We go across the bird like that, okay, like a Superman. And then as we get out to the new side, I can sit down and I start steering behind my back, put my rudder straight, and bring my rope hand to the tiller end, and swap my hand around, okay? And then I can put my foot under the toe strap, okay, and then I can start hiking out again. Okay, last thing I'm going to show you is the jibe, okay? When you're jibing, you don't steer very much, okay? Because it's a very small angle. When you're tacking, it's 90 degrees when you turn. Jibing, it may only be about 45 degrees, okay? You don't want to do a massive turn when you jibe. Okay, because things get out. So what I'm going to do is put my tiller extension over the new side first, and I'm probably going to move my body weight into the middle, because all the pressure is just pushing me forward. Okay, I shouldn't be heaving over too much when I'm sailing downwind. Okay, so I'm going for a a run to a run on the other side. Still extension out the new side, ready for me already. Yep. Just pull it out a little more. Okay. So I'm going to start the turn by pulling the jar, pulling the rudder. Okay. And to keep that main sheet tight, okay, just bring it in a little bit. Okay, you can start bringing it in. So when the wind catches it, pull it, it starts in. to pull. Okay. And if I pull the main sheet quickly like that, it takes up a lot of slack. Okay. I can also even pull it again from here. But don't let go of this one. Pull it down like that, and I've suddenly got the whole rope tight. Okay. okay. As soon as I've pulled it in, I let it out, let that one go again. And then as the boom's in the middle, I'm in the middle, and the boom goes out the new side. Okay. And then once the boat's stabilized, then I sort my hands. Okay. So let's try that once more going this way. So I'm going to initiate the turn by putting the rudder onto my side, the onto my side, and then big pull to get that rope tight. The boom comes over. I can grab the rope again and let go of that one straight away. So as the boom's in the middle of the boat, I'm in the middle of the boat, and then the boom goes out the new side, and I can just swap my hands and steer straight again. When you're hiking out in a laser, because you're on your own, you do need to hike out quite hard if there's any wind. Okay. So the technique is to put the toe strap under your, just under your, your foot basically, not your toes really be able to keep your legs fairly straight okay and your bum is outside the boat you don't want to hike like this where your bum is sagging because your bum will hit the water okay so you're going to try and keep your legs straight okay for me i got longer legs so i put my toe strap under my shins almost okay and then i can try and put my shoulders out okay so it's a good exercise for your six pack yes <laughs> He knew there was a reason to go sailing. Yeah. Okay, so you should be able to sit in this position all the time. Okay, when a gust comes, you should be in this position. Okay. For maybe 30 seconds or however long the gust is. If you're in this position all the time, what do you think it means? Good day. It's a good day. You're a bit overpowered. Good day. Okay, because you're gonna get tired. Okay, so what I can do, if I'm in this position all the time to keep the boat flat, I'm probably gonna pull on my uh, downhaul first and my kicker, okay? If the boat is just not staying flat, then I might have to let my main sheet out as well. Okay. okay. But I pull all these three control lines first before I let my main sheet out if I can. Obviously, if it's just a gust that's lasting maybe two seconds, we get a lot of those around here, then you can probably just, it's quicker just to adjust your main sheet and then bring your main sheet. Go for you. For you and then. And then. So I'm going to show you how you can launch the boat and get rid of the trolley get on your own. And then you can put someone on the boat. So the first thing is to make sure the main sheet's quite loose. Okay, it's not going to be caught by anything. 
Because oh, if it gets yeah. caught, then the boat, as soon as I get it off the trolley, it will just capsize. Right. Okay. So I'm going to push, I'm going to hold the paint with one hand. He's gone. Okay. 
So the thing to look for is that you're standing on the dagboard with your back in the wind. Okay? Once you've done that, say you climb in, trying to climb in on the windward side, using the grab rails. Your sail having to be very tight here. Okay? Oh. Whereas if I have a bit of rope, I can let the sail out. Okay, so there's your downhole. Okay. Now, so there's a reason why we do everything. Okay, and there's a reason why. I've rigged the green one on this side and the single one on that side. You may not. It's to do with while we're racing. Yeah, we keep them separate so they get tangled up. Okay. While we're racing, we normally go around a course forehand, right, mm -hmm. anti-clockwise. And this one is normally tight when you sail upwind. So we put it on really, really tight. You can see it's falling the sail down. Okay, it's making the sail flat and it depowers the sail. So when it's windy, you want this one really tight. But when you go downwind. The quickest way to release it is by grabbing not one of these lines but just a single one okay? and then it all comes undone quickly. Okay? The reason why we have it on that side is that when we go around the buoy, okay, we're sitting on that side of the boat as we go around the mark and it's easier to reach that. Okay? So there's a reason for everything. Okay? Okay, so the end of it just goes through the have your downhaul in your port hand side. Okay. And we can tidy up this long piece of rope. Okay. We can make it with a handle. And we do that by making like a plaque. So if you start off with a rope like that, put a loop in it, twist it around itself. You got that? And then you keep doing that, pushing it through, but don't pull it all the way, you just pull it through a little bit because then you can get the next one, push it through, and that's just plastic. Basically. The reason why we do that is to create ourselves a nice handle. Okay? Because this you really need to get tight when it's windy. And it's quite hard just to hold a single piece of string. But the rope still needs to be thin enough to go through these blocks. Okay? So we start off with a thin rope, but we make it flat, so we end up with a fat rope. And this has got a nice long piece of rope, so I can I bowlet made the loop. Okay, which is the Comes up. Up, up, up the trunk. Yeah. Down the hole. Up down the hole. Okay, and then pull it tight. Okay, now it's got a very good handle there. You can see when we're racing, we'll probably get this eye down to about there. Okay, so another inch. So you really hang off it. Okay, that's only when it's windy. Okay, these are deep power control. So if you're overpowered, if you can't keep the boat flat, and your rudder's coming out the water like I showed you earlier, okay, then we start using a lot of downhaul. Okay. Right, the other control we have, because we've got another cleat here, is our outboard. Okay, so we put the sail on the okay, and we pull it down. This is all purchased right, to make it easier for you to pull with the sail. Okay, and that's quite simple, it puts on there. This is going to go through here. Yeah. Have a think about it and ask for a second, and then down this block. So, this is going on the starboard kick. Okay. And again, we can make a little handle. This is going to come much tighter. You can do two handles. You can do a plait like that, or you can just do a bowling straight away. If you've got a shorter bit of rope, that's probably the only handle you can do. Okay. We need to tie this around the boom okay, so that it keeps the boom up higher. End up with your sail having to be very tight here. Oh. Okay? Whereas if I have a bit of rope, I can let the sail out and I can make the sail more curved, but my boom doesn't drop down. Okay, okay? so that's the advantage. Okay, so you go twice through the sail. Okay, and a good thing when you're tying this is if you put the boom on your shoulder, okay, you're not holding the weight of the boom. Okay. Um, I'll probably rotate it around so I'm tying it, not here. And really get this one tight, okay? doesn't matter if the sail is overlapping the boom, okay? Because it will always stretch out. 
Okay. Yeah. Left or right? Right over left. Yeah. Okay. Good. So we, we want to end up going forward. So we're going down first. So it's important to make sure that you, when you feed that rope through, that you do actually get it that way through the rope, through the block, okay? Otherwise, it'll be working against you. So you need a figure eight in the end. Mine is here. On a laser, if it's light winds, we often have it. That's probably max out. We have it, okay? So 90 degrees. When you're racing, you might actually have a longer main sheet unless you go to that there. Okay. But in windy weather, you probably only let it out that far. Okay. What happens is the top of the sail gets a bit out of control when you let too much. When you're sailing downwind, you always got to keep that part of the sail in control. Okay, what we need to do here is Sailing upwind, our objective is really to have the boom over the corner of the boat. Okay? Now, if we have more wind, okay, the boom gets pushed out to the side, so I keep pulling it in. Okay? And eventually, when we've got a bit more wind than this, you'll actually sail the boat from block to block. Okay? The next setting you consider is a kicker. Okay? Once you go block to block, you can just pull your kicker on so that it takes up slack. Okay. So now when I let my boom out, the boom stays a little bit lower. If I let my kicker off, if you have a look at the boom first. So we can keep control of the boom. What also means that when you're sailing the boat, okay, there's less pressure on me. You can see if I have the steer in that position, there's almost no tension there. Because as soon as I let my kicker off, okay, we pull it out. So the kicker it does help a lot, as with the downhill. When you've got the boat on the shore, okay, just you don't actually want any tension in the sail, okay? So that the sail is free to flap and you can remind your head on the boom. Um, so that otherwise, if you have everything really tight, you just come to the side and the boat will capsize. That ends up being a bit of a problem. Okay, this is the outwall. We normally have it rigging so that if I put my hand or you put your hand there as well you're just touching the sail okay that's a good setting okay so if you are a smaller person you probably have smaller hands okay so you all have your sail tighter than if I have when I rig mine and that, the reason for that is that as I pull it tighter it becomes less powerful okay obviously if I'm a bit heavier I need a bit more power Okay. Put your palm on the boom and your fingertips just touch the sail. Yeah. That's yeah. a good setting to all right. If you go downwind, you can actually have it looser than that. You probably have it. So I would probably have a setting maybe like two hands. Okay. Downwind, one yeah. hand upwind. 
and the dagwood. Now dagwood, like most boats, you can't put it in until we start sailing. I'll just show you how you put it in once your boat's off the trolley. You can use the elastic to clip it on, okay, and that should stop the blade from slipping out. We've got one problem. You have to tighten that thing. The... Oh, does it, does it have to go below that? Yeah. Okay. So that main sheet can go across. It. Um. Okay. You take it off and just slip it under. When you launch, okay, you can put your blade down in the water, and you can pull this one to get the blade tight. And that, and that holds it down. It okay. Should hold it out. It also holds this. You've got to stick it. Oh, but this stick goes out, right? This one should. Yeah. Be out, right? Okay. Rotate it all the way down. Okay. 